what is up guys Ryan here and uh, before I start today's video I want to encourage you guys to leave a like and if you enjoyed the video be sure to add it to your favorites and share it with your friends and if you're not already subscribed to my channel click that subscribe button for more videos just like this um, but in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create an ad banner gif it's actually really simple and uh, it's really nice you know a lot of people they kind of just put text in and that's it but you know you can actually add a lot more detail into it than what normal people uh, would like more uh, shadowing motion blur and stuff like that um, but I made a couple here in the last couple days um, and a lot of people have been wanting me to uh, do a tutorial on them um, so the one I'm going to be doing today is this one right here um, obviously I'm not going to be doing uh, to teach you how to make the background that's just easy Minecraft Cinematics I just added in the background now when you add moving parts like big moving parts like this background here it does uh, increase uh, the quality of it which also means that the file size is going to be bigger so it may not be able to fit on your website so you got to be cautious when doing that because the majority of the time it's five megabytes for a gif I think that's what it is per like slot or whatever but uh, I'm gonna be teaching you that uh, we're gonna be going between After Effects and Photoshop uh, to complete this process so uh, let's jump into After Effects and get to work so when making an ad banner for any website you typically have to stick to certain dimensions that they give you um, now on screen right now I have a, a couple of different dimensions that you can use um, when making uh, an ad banner now typically you can use any size but usually you want to stick to a certain size because the website or depending on whatever website you're on it restricts you to how big or how small you use it so the size we're going to be doing uh, using today is 728 by 90 so we'll just go up here to composition new composition make sure our width is 728 and our height is 90 we're going to hit OK and what we're going to do is we want to go over here and we're going to select a background uh, since we're going for a Minecraft theme we're going to use a Minecraft background but you can use anything you want we're just going to select this one here and we're going to drag it on to our project file and we're going to zoom out and uh, grab one of these handles here and we're going to zoom in or drag in by holding shift to keep a universal uh, scale and uh, we're going to zoom in and just make sure everything is all nice uh, right about there looks good because you have the mountains and the sun and it looks nice so uh, we're just going to right click on here and we're going to rename this as our background so we have our background there and the next thing we want to do is we're going to go up, grab our text and um, we're just going to type in Minecraft uh, now since I already had the project file set up already um, uh, it's already pretty much done the text the way I want it um, but the font I'm using is Minecrafter 3 you can really find that on any website um, defont.com, myfont.com, any any website that uh, has typefaces will most likely have this so it'll, you can find it anywhere um, all I did was added a white fill with a black stroke of 15 pixels and the typeface is 60 pixels so it's really self-explanatory um, <clears throat> so we just want to center this up accordingly that looks pretty good right there and we want to open up our text and as you can see next to our text um, tab you see we have our an uh, this animate button you want to click on that and you want to go up here to scale once you have that we'll add a range selector to our animation so we want to open up our range selector and as you can see here we have our start end, and offset value so obviously you have our start end, and then the offset value that offsets the text when animating it um, what we want to do is we want to make sure we're at zero on our time our uh, timeline and then make sure our scale is down to zero and we're going to keyframe that and then what we want to do is we also want to keyframe um, go to about like two seconds here and then we're going to put our start value up to a hundred and we're also going to keyframe that and then we want to go back to zero and then put our start value to zero I kind of did that out of order there that's my mistake so as you can see here if we do a quick RAM preview we have to see the text kinda zooms and or not zooms in it kinda scales itself in uniformly and it looks really cool so a next effect that we're gonna use is we actually wanna drag this our last keyframe in a bit so it's a little bit faster um, but we can obviously add a little bit more pizzazz to that if you want to say so what we're going to do is we're going to select both our front keyframes here by clicking and holding shift to select both of them we're going to right click on them go to keyframe assist uh, keyframe assistant I mean and then we're going to go easy ease in and then for our last keyframe we're going to right click on it uh, keyframe assistant and easy ease out so if we do another quick RAM preview 
you can see that it kind of um, the way that it works it kind of starts slow and then gets fast again so uh, you know overall it's just a nice um nice little tip for when you're animating stuff in After Effects um, now the next thing we want to do is we can actually add motion blur to this which would add a ni another nice um, cool effect so to enable motion blur all we have to do is make sure that a, mo a motion blur is enabled for our whole entire timeline by clicking enable motion blur right here and then if we were to quick ram preview that actually you can't actually see the motion blur and the reason is because you have to keep the motion blur uh, checked off here which is next to your text right there so just make sure that's enabled with the uh, icon in there so now if we play it again you can see we have some nice motion blur in there that adds a really nice effect now the next effect we're going to be using is uh, we're going to add that glint that goes across the screen there it's actually very simple and actually a lot of people don't use it and it's actually a very strong tool to uh, grab your audience's attention it's really nice so what we want to do is we're just going to grab go up here to layer new and make it a solid uh, we're just going to call this keep it at white solid make sure the color is again is like a offset white hit ok and what we want to do is we're going to drag it down um, to about there and make it you could depending on how big you want the glint uh, depends on what size you want but that size right there looks pretty good to me and what you want to do is you want to make sure you want to find your text so obviously right there um, it's over our text and if we were to play that back it you would actually see it when it um when it animated over so we don't want that we want to make sure that our glint is out and out of the way when it's animating so we'll just keep that out right about there and what we want to do is we want to go up here to effects and presets now if this is in here uh, to grab it all you have to do is go up here to windows and then go down here to effects and presets and it will open up next to your character tab uh, we want to search for fast blur and then we want to drag that on to our rectangle like so then as you can see here it opens up our comp in our comp one here and we want to change the blurriness to about 850 and then we want to change the blur dimensions to horizontal once you do that, as you can see, it adds a nice blur to it, but it's a little bit too faded. So what you want to do is you want to actually we could just duplicate this by hitting Control C, Control V, or hitting Command C, Command Command C, Command V on Mac. And what all we want to do is we're just going to select both of them by holding Shift and clicking, and we want to hit Precompose, and we're just going to call this our glint layer. There you go. And as you can see, now both of those are together. Now as you can see here, I have this on an angle, so um, the glint. So to change the glint angle, all we have to do is go up here to our rotation tool, or you can hit W, and we're just going to rotate it, and oh, I had the wrong thing selected. Make sure our glint is selected. Why does that keep doing that? It's weird. Make sure our glint is selected, put it on an angle, and uh, right about there looks good. Let's drag this up a bit because it's a little disproportioned. There you go. That look, that's looking pretty good right there. So what we want to do is we actually want to duplicate our Minecraft text by hitting Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V on Mac. And um, we want to make sure our glint layer is in between both of our copied text. And uh, what we want to do after that is we want to make sure that um, we have our glint layer selected. And you want to go down here to our track mat and make go make sure that it's on alpha mat 2 or alpha uh, text 2 which would be every whatever copy you just made of your text so you want to click that now if it's not showing up on your timeline you can um, that's because it's not enabled um, you all you have to do is go down here and uh, make sure that there's usually a button here don't know where it is but if you click on it it will add your track mat for you don't know why it's not showing up um, but as you can see once we did that it actually disappear it made our glint disappear but it actually didn't disappear it's just hiding behind um, our text so if we were to open up our glint layer or uh, hold down or click P to bring up our position tab we're going to keyframe it here or actually wherever the text comes in so the text stops right about there so we'll keyframe it right here at the current position where it's at so it's like right about there and then we want to go to about a little above two seconds and we're just going to bring our position all the way across our text till it's off the scene so if we just go to uh, right click on this easy ease in and then easy ease out for the end keyframe and we do a quick RAM preview 
Now, as you can see, that was pretty nice, um, but it actually was a little bit too fast for my liking, so we'll just drag this out a little bit. And actually, if you wanted to add even more effect to it, you can ask to, uh, again, add motion blur to it. So if we do another quick RAM preview, as you can see, we have that really nice glint effect, and it adds that motion blur, which uh, is another great tool, which looks really nice. So that's pretty much it for at the After Effects part. Um, so let's just uh, hurry up and uh, save this. So to save it, all we have to do is go up here to Composition, go down here to Add to Render Keen, and we want to make sure that our our settings are at best. Make sure that our uh, output mode is on QuickTime Movie. If you don't have that, you can obviously download it online. Um, it's very quick and easy to install. Make sure that our video output channels is RGB plus Alpha. Hit OK, and we're just going to call this tutorial banner and we're just gonna hit enter and let it render obviously this was a very short animation um, so obviously that rendered very quickly so let's jump into Photoshop and uh, let's finish this up so once in Photoshop you want to go up here to file and import and video frames to layers once uh, once you have that we just want to find our file we're gonna call this we're going to look for our tutorial banner, so here it is, tutorialbanner.mov. Open it, and it will bring up a dialog box here. Um, it will let you preview it, and uh, there you can see we have our animation, and it will show you all 500 frames. Um, and you want to make sure that our range to import is from beginning to end. Now if you want to select just a certain amount of layers, like if you want to select a certain part in a movie or something, if you just want to make one part of a GIF, you could just use selected range only or limit it to every two frames which is like depends on how many times it skips or reads it it's kind of complicated and not really I don't know anyways just put uh, make sure it's from beginning to end and hit OK uh, depending on how big it is depends on how long it will take uh, this was a very small animation so it was actually relatively quick as you can see here it made almost 500 layers of oh, wait well this is a smaller animation um, but the max it can do is 500 layers because um, you know any any size bigger than that would be pretty ridiculous um, as you can see like I said 500 uh, like 300 layers here um, but you don't really know what to do with them so to start like animating them and save it as a gif well it's actually already animated my mistake um, you want to go up here to window and then go down here and select timeline once you have that it will bring up our timeline and what you want to do is you want to make sure our first uh, frame is selected and we want to go to the end of our timeline and hold shift and click to select all our frames in between uh, now if we hit play as you can see that's a little bit too slow um, for what we had before so if you want to make it faster like I said go to the beginning and uh, we're gonna select our first frame here and then go to the end hold shift and click and then we're going to click down here where it has all these decimal numbers we want to click on that and you want to hit other we're going to change this to 0 0.02 and hit OK and uh, if we hit play now uh, now it's like I said so this is just um since this is frame by frame it is going to be a little bit slow that is a lot better uh, but when we go to save it later um, you'll see that it's actually a lot faster than it really is so um, we just hit pause here uh, bring up our um, other timeline here just make sure everything is all good everything's all aligned everything looks good so we'll just go back and hit continue just ignore that um, as it loads in again oh for some reason it put it back to uh, 0.3 seconds so let's change it back again don't know why I did that um, hold shift and hit other and so we're going to put it to 0 0.02 hit enter and uh, make sure that down here it says usually typically it starts on once you want to change that and make sure it's on forever so it's like a loop like a gif so if we go up here to file actually you know what we since I put this to 10 seconds our animation actually does end before 10 seconds so let's go to let's go to 150 frames or 170 frames let's go to 170 and delete everything that's uh, behind 170 frames so if we d 
delete that by hitting our trash can button here. Hit delete frames, yes. If we hit play again, um, it'll be a shorter animation and more GIF-like, I guess. And it's, you know, it just makes it look a lot better. Actually, let's change that. Let's put it to 100, select 115 frames and delete everything behind it. Cause you know, just trimming it up and making it look a lot better. So hit play again. See, it comes in, goes over, scales in, and then the glint comes over, and then it kind of just restarts itself. So if we go to file, um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, uh, you know what? Let's delete everything past 100 frames. I know I keep changing my mind here, but you know, things change. So go to 100 frames and go to our last frame, which is 114. And just delete that hit yes and now we're just going to save this because this looks pretty good for right now so we want to go up here to file save for web and this dialog box will come up um, if we hit play you can see we have our animation with our nice glint looks nice and it repeats itself make sure that um, your looping options are on forever because if not then what's the point of a gif you know um, Currently, right now, I'm on uh, the preset. You want to keep that unnamed, and you want to make to put the colors to 256. This will obviously make the quality a lot better. Um, now, as you can see here, you can't really tell because we actually have very basic colors, not many moving parts. Um, but for something like this, as you can see, these are two. These are the same exact um, gifts right here. But this one down here is obviously higher quality because this is 256 colors and this is 138 colors. So you can actually see the difference of quality. Now obviously this one is a lot bigger and I wouldn't be able to put it on a website. But this one right here I'd be able to. So um, for this one since like I said not a lot of moving parts, not too many colors. You can actually put this to 256 colors um, because you know this is only at what 98.91k. So that's enough to fit on a website. Um, that's more than enough. So if we just hit play, look how it goes through, and uh, everything looks nice and smooth. Um, so that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. So we'll just save this up and uh, just save it to wherever you want. And um, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial, guys. If this was helpful, please leave a like and add it to your favorites and maybe share it with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Links in the description. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice day.